Hey all, here OS Reviews. About a month ago, we checked out a rugged Android smartphone from Conquest called the S16 Pro, and I really liked it. It was well constructed, obviously, but also had very powerful processing power and pretty good camera performance as well, with a 48 megapixel sensor that gave very detailed shots. Well, whereas this is more of their flagship model, today we're taking a look at one of their more entry-level rugged smartphones. It's called the F2, and what makes this really unique is the super compact size. It might be one of the smallest mini Android smartphones on the market. With phones getting bigger and bigger over the years, it will be a bit of a contrast to adjust to something so small. But again, if you're someone that has smaller hands and you've been longing for a smaller device, then this certainly offers an interesting option. In terms of price point, again, it's much cheaper. It starts at only only around 150 bucks and still has decent specs for something really small including 3 gigs of RAM, has all the typical 4G, Wi-Fi, dual band, Bluetooth, GPS bands we've come to expect, and there's also a slightly upgraded version that they call a luxury edition that also has a brighter flashlight and the inclusion of some additional accessories like a charging cradle in the box. Some other functions we see here include a 3700 milliamp hour capacity battery which claims to be removable as well, getting more and more rare these days and that size is decent considering this is a tiny card sized phone essentially and the speaker they claim also should be loud enough to you know work as a siren the display is protected by a layer of Corning's Gorilla Glass 5 to be explosion proof very good and the luxury edition also has a built-in fingerprint scanner on the side and by the way also has built-in NFC which is great to see for mobile payment basically all the sensors you could possibly want is squished into this tiny little three inch phone which is impressive and the camera on the rear is 13 megapixels and inside here we have just the phone right on top other accessories that we get in this luxury edition packaging include the charging cradle so you can drop the phone in and just let it charge without fiddling around with any wires or cables we have a standard usb type c cable included here there's also a wall adapter with the conquest logo we've also got a tool of some sort to help you remove the back cover more easily so actually inside of this plastic cradle containing the phone, it's already attached into this hard shell case that you can see uh, comes with a luxury edition, includes a belt clip. It also comes with a lanyard strap, which is pre-attached to the phone. There is also a pre-applied screen protector. There's a film on the very top that we can peel off but underneath there's still a layer of plastic that can protect this phone's display from scratches. So we have a factory installed screen protector layer, which is a neat bonus. First impressions, this thing is just super compact and comfortable to hold using one hand, truly a one-handed phone. And here it is in terms of a quick size comparison next to the aforementioned S16 Pro that we saw from before that has over a six inch display. So you can see the size difference there, much smaller. But the overall build quality is still reminiscent of its larger sibling in terms of being built out of this ballistic nylon carbon fiber texture, very rugged, soft touch rubber accents and some metal rails on the sides that give it also a sense of heft when you're carrying it. It's not the thinnest phone of course, but for something so small, it gets you a better grip when you're holding it. Now on the right hand spine, there's access to a multifunction key that can be reprogrammed in the menus. There's also a volume rocker and a power key and then on the bottom here we have a rubber flap to prevent water from leaking in that also shows the type c port underneath or you can rely on the charging contacts for the proprietary cradle that can kind of fit in like this to charge it without needing to fiddle around with the flap and on the left hand edge we have access to the aforementioned fingerprint scanner so reminiscent of some Nokia phones and Sony devices, it's on the side. We also have the push to talk key and a second multifunction key that can be remapped. The side rails, by the way, can also be customized. So just like what we saw with the S16 Pro, you can change out this rail for different colors like red or blue accents and further customize it. Now on the back here, we do have what looks like these screws and that's why you can use the included tool to kind of unhinge this and you can just pull off the back cover and underneath here is where we have the aforementioned battery, which is indeed replaceable. That's great to see and pretty rare these days. We also see kind of a seal underneath here that prevents kind of the water from leaking in. But obviously you want to make sure that this door is tightly closed before you submerge it into the elements. Now underneath the battery here is where we have access to a micro SD card slot for expanding the built-in 32 gigs of memory and also the SIM card slot. And the 
flashlight or torch is actually a separate sensor on the very top uh, on this particular model and there's also a flap that covers up a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Let's take a look at the initial setup screen and turning the phone on. Uh, on the front here we also have some physical buttons on the rear here on the chin. They have talk and end keys as well as a home button. They're all very tactile and responsive. Loudspeaker and you also have a few touch sensitive back and menu keys on the bottom portion of the screen. The 3 inch display definitely has slightly larger bezels around it but considering the rugged nature of this tiny phone that they want to protect the screen from drops and shock I guess it's acceptable. Now of course our keyboard here will be a pretty small experience but the touch screen is fairly responsive. It has a decent haptic engine as well that feels quite precise. We can enroll our fingerprints here, so putting it onto the edge here for it to register. We'll continuously lift it and adjust the position ever so slightly, and we're done. It seems like there's two options to use something called Launcher 3 or Simple Launcher, so they're both kind of proprietary launchers that Conquest have designed turn up the screen brightness is at the minimum setting right now and at the maximum it definitely is pretty decent in terms of visibility as we have fairly bright studio lights around us right now and we have the google assistant search bar as well as folders for all the typical google apps pre-installed such as our drive photos youtube there's space here for basically three applications uh, in terms of the screen width so definitely you'll be doing a bit more scrolling but overall it's uh, decent in terms of the fluidity and and responsiveness of the general UI here on first impressions, it does feel pretty clean. If we tap on the flashlight, by default that's still mapped to the camera's LED flash, so to activate the real torch we probably have to use uh, Conquest's toolbox, which is their custom apps. It's like a compass for instance, which have been pre-installed to take advantage of the various sensors that we have. So you can use it to control various appliances and objects around your house. And this is the multitasking key that you can bring up to switch back and forth between apps or close out from them. Notably, we have about 17% used out of the box, so about 26 gigs are free. Advanced functions that we have here include a pocket mode, so the volume will increase when the device is in your pocket to give you an alarm. Um, there's a touch protection mode that will reduce the sensitivity of the screen. Also customize the aforementioned function keys, so you can tap on this, for instance, to uh, hold to open a certain app, or long press to access a different command. If we long hold for the flashlight, that's where it will actually be triggered for the real torch on the top instead of the camera's flash. And this is indeed a very bright light, but because it's using LED, it still is fairly energy efficient. We can long hold for a few seconds to turn it off. So you can customize that red multifunction key and also the black multifunction key as well. Now, if we change to the other launcher called the simple launcher that we saw earlier, what this does is basically uh, brings us into a interface style that's more simplified. It's meant more for maybe the elderly or someone that doesn't want as many functions. It mimics the appearance of a Windows phone or even a dumb phone back in the day. Shows off the vibrancy of the screen. It is an IPS panel, so it has pretty good viewing angles and in terms of looking at it from various degrees, colors don't really shift too much. Again, it's fully laminated, so not too much glare between the glass and the screen, and the touch sensitivity is quite good. It's just a very small size, however. So that's more or less it for our first impressions look at the Conquest F2, this tiny compact mini Android smartphone uh, that has a very rugged build and also lots of customization options. It's a very small, compact phone, and of course we'll be doing more testing and come out with a more complete comprehensive video review soon for now that's been our video thanks for watching here at os reviews that's been our unboxing first impressions look at the conquest f2